Hi, welcome back. So here we've got a little project. It's uh, this is an Atari ST drive. Um, now this this drive was I used it for quite a while on my Mega ST2. Um, as you can see, it has that ludicrous compact connector there and a ribbon cable. It's all a bit naff, but it works. It works fine. I had an external power supply in there, and this drive uh, it worked really nicely, but Obviously, that's you know a mechanical drive, and it would be nice with my uh, Atari STE to be able to easily get files on and off. So we're gonna swap out this GoTech into there. Now this GoTech was oh, uh, I don't know whether whether you recognise that, but that that power socket there is actually for a BBC Micro um, and that worked really nicely, it's, it's great. But I don't need that at the moment and I wanted to get a, a, a beige coloured GoTech to match the aesthetic of that but obviously, you know, well that's actually black as well which is a bit strange so um, yeah, I'm not too fast. At the moment it's more important that I can get files on and off so, so this drive is going to be put into storage and I'm gonna obviously take this this power shock and now I, I extended that cable it's really really long but you know it's if you're trying to put drives separately on a, on a desk separate to the computer because you haven't got the space you need longer long drives and in fact the ribbon cable for the BBC drive is absolutely huge so anyway there we go. So that is, so that goes in there like that. Um, but the key thing is, this can go in there. Obviously, uh, I would need to put the um, take these rubber feet off. But there's bits in there. There's there's holes, recesses. I don't think they're actually tapped. So I've got to try and figure out how to do this on. So the first thing to do is I'm going to take these feet off which is not needed. So it should just twist off actually, yeah. Uh, and this horrible blue tack. <laughs> I'll keep those feet because they're always, oops, they're always useful. And if it doesn't work, then I can always put it back. So the idea is that the GoTech will go into there, uh, and those line up, and then that lines up in there. I think it's going to look quite neat. Yeah, you know, quite a neat bit of kit. Obviously, as I say, it's black. It's not beige. So maybe when I do get a beige one, I'll just swap it back out again. Um, before I do that, in fact, I've noticed that this, as I say, it's beige. It's actually beige, but a bit dirty. So I'm just going to clean this off. I don't think it's actually. It's just some surface um, dirt. I don't think there's anything too nasty. There's a bit of a chip on the on the corner there, but yeah, that's come up a bit, a bit nicer. So I need to figure out how I'm going to mount this on there. Uh, so I think what I might do actually is put this put this on. So there is one. Just make sure that got that around the right way. Where's the drive? So that has actually got a proper keyway which is nice and sometimes unusual. So we've got one on this side here. So that, that little notch is one which is good. That means it's that way and actually there is a notch in there which is quite nice. So there we go. Perfect. That's that one. What's really cool about this drive is the fact that you can access stuff easily so once that goes in you can actually get stuff from the back just line that up there so that, that's in there so you can sort of push things down the back if, if you need to um, I need to figure out power for this and I'm going to need external power supply because on the STE it doesn't it doesn't provide power I don't think it will provide no it won't it, it only needs five volts, um, so there are options. I'm thinking maybe 
maybe powering it off from a USB that might be quite nice if I if I make a cable similar to this obviously not with a uh, you can see it's, it's only got two cores because it's, it's ground and then there's plus five volts so if, if I make a cable similar to that and connect it up USB then this can be a USB powered um, floppy drive which is just easier because I've got plenty of USB things floating around um, that are always on and provides enough power for that so it doesn't need it needs virtually nothing so I know that this won't work because these aren't keyed so there's no brass collet or anything where I, I can put the uh, screws in which is a bit annoying I think I might do actually is put these screws into back into this drive because they're actually the perfect size these screw heads are really really shallow which can be quite useful when you're mounting stuff in a case and whatever because it's you know these have little rubber feet which have enough clearance but sometimes you don't really have that luxury and you if you're using PC ones the actual size of the heads can be too big so I'm just gonna put those back in there I don't know what I'm gonna do with this drive I'll probably just keep it as a spare because I know it works in 720 on the ST it's pretty good I have to remember to label that so yeah let's make a USB cable for the GoTech I was going to use this cable here but it was a bit too short so uh, I found a, another cable it's actually a, a data cable as well so I don't really need that but we'll just hack it down and see so the first thing I've got to do I've got the uh, <coughs> drive connector so I only need a couple of these I think rather than have loads of wires everywhere I'm just going to take these out so they, th these things push down and they can be removed easily so there's only two wires we need which is good um, so I'm going to I think where my wire strippers have gone well I have to just bodge it for now and uh, there are those wires I can tin those in a second I can find my solder. That's actually a good point. Where's my solder gone? Is it down here? Right, let's tin this first. And then I'm going to find some heat shrink. I'll put some heat shrink on it. Uh, and then we'll have a look at the other cable, the USB side of it. And get that sorted out like I say I, I won't need the data uh, connections um, I'm sure where that tin has gone anyway, let's see right. okay so I want, I've chosen this cable on the other one because as I say, it's, uh, I need some decent length on that really. Um, let's see what we've got here. There's the outer shield and those two there for the data, for the power up. The others are da uh, other data ones. We can just chop those off we don't need those okay right then yeah so I'm gonna actually so that's there I'm going to measure that there and chop it there and then put we tin that other positive there so that the wires are staggered so they don't short out just makes things a bit easier otherwise you you know you've got to have loads of heat shrink with this method you can get away with just having uh, an outer heat shrink and then the uh, one of them one of the inners heat shrink um, and clean the tip ok 
Okay, now I've got to find some heat drink. I've got crazy colours, but I don't really want to go for crazy colours. I might have no choice. Hmm. Okay. Not that cool. Right, okay, so that's that's good enough for that. So that goes onto there like that. There's the USB. So that should work. Uh, oops. Make sure the elastic band is on that, otherwise it goes everywhere. Now, so that's, that's that bit. Next thing I've got to do is try and figure out how I'm going to physically mount this on there. So if we have a look. Um, there is... There are holes at the bottom, but they, those holes are. Oops. They're not tapped. So you see there, they're not tapped. So I'm going to have to mount that on there like that, and then put the holes, get some screws, and screw it in with self tappers okay so i found four really good little self tappers that go in there let me show you what that looks like so that should be now complete and they can sit on the desk and look really cool i know that's black i know it's a bit annoying but it is what it is right cool well let's get that rigged up um, in fact, before we do that, let's just plug it into the power supply. There's a 5 volt on that. See whether we get anything. Yeah, there we go. So that's lit up. Um, that's all good. So we know that that's powered properly. Um, great. So, right, it's now installed on the uh, STE, my lovely STE. Um, so it's all there, uh, waiting. So I've got a USB stick, real old school USB stick, and I downloaded a copy of Metroids, which I know runs off the desktop. Um, so if we plug that in, it'll then scan the disk, and I can then, it's now ejected. If I then click that, that's now added it to the machine. Um, so I'm running a newer version of the TOS here. So if I, I know it's medium rare, so if I just swap the resolution, it's an internal hard drive, so it's doing its hard drive weirdness. So we're now in medium res. If I then install devices, it will show all of the drives that are running. It's just a bit of a mess, to be honest. Uh, and if I look at drive B, which is that one, there it is. So that's all running. So let's see if we can load the thing. And we can all laugh at my embarrassing gameplay as ever. That's probably one of the slowest USB sticks I've got. <laughs> but there we go. Right, so let's go. Whoa, whoa where's my shield? Ah, I teleported. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, you get you, you get the idea. It all, it all works. It's really nice. It's nice to have a, um, a modern um, file storage Thing. So presumably, if, if I can then get some discs, I can make some boot because obviously this is drive B. So if, sorry, I, I, I've got. Yeah. So if um, that, obviously that, that's drive B, that's drive A. So what I'm going to have to do is, um, if I get a file copy program, I should be able to mount some stuff in there and then copy it to drive A, so I can boot from that because I can't boot from that. Um, so that'd be really cool. Obviously, I've got a hard drive on it anyway, as I say. So, you know, I'm, I'm intending to do some other work with this, um, and uh, I'll give a proper sort of introduction to this unit anyway. Is this? They're not particularly common. Um, but they are amazing, and the fact this one is switchable to 16 megahertz. So I'm going to try and get um, uh, Wolfenstein running on there in uh, 16 megahertz glory. 
anyway that's it that's it for now it's uh, I'm sure it's black but as I say I think if it was beige or or this sort of color it'd be, it'd be better aesthetic wise but it works fine and uh, yeah that's a nice upgrade